Hello and welcome to Hot Indonesia, your only English source of smart conversation. I'm Dalton Tanaka in Jakarta. Here is this week's HI Hot List. Lockdown limit. How much longer do we need to stay at home to stop the spread of COVID-19? Business plan. When reopening day comes, why your recovery strategies must already be in place. Input from Lynn Newman, Managing Director of the American Chamber of Commerce. And TV time, how a new public television program is helping kids learn their lessons at home and having some fun at the same time. Here are my co-hosts now, each and every week, still working from their respective homes. Sandrina Malachiano, former TV news anchor, now a political marketing consultant. And Santiago Uno, business leader and former vice governor of Jakarta. Here is hot topic number one, lockdown limit. Now, others are doing it, extending stay-at-home orders to prevent the further spread of the deadly coronavirus. Singapore's lockdown is now until June after a spike in infections there. Jakarta will do the same when previous restrictions end this week. Airports are closed as of today. When will the world begin to turn again? Now, at midweek here in Jakarta, the number of cases jumped to more than 7,000, nearly 400 cases in one day. Um, you know, it's common sense to me, guys. We can't end this shutdown yet, um, right, Sandy, until the f- curve flattens. Yeah, I just got back from uh, sessions, and that's why I'm wearing the, um, the uniform for the volunteers. In particular, we, the sessions that I had with the uh, COVID-19 Special Task Force, Task Force is that we need to be guided by data. And today, that there are efforts, but I guess it is too early to tell. You know, Spanish flu have uh, multiple waves, and some countries also experiencing uh, a resurgence of this COVID-19. So I would be very careful, wait for the data, and once you are sure that the data is showing one way or the other, then you make the uh, decisions. And we need to make sure also that the central government have just banned Mudik, just banned the uh, going home to the village for the Ramadan and the festive seasons. So it's a very, very serious uh, time and we just need to be vigilant and we need to be patient. Okay, Sandrina, you agree with extending the, uh, the tightened restrictions uh, here in Jakarta? Definitely, Dalton, because we have no idea when this will uh, end. We, don't, we, do, we, we can't see the light at the end of the tunnel yet. And it's good that the government now is implementing uh, sterner restrictions, like also the large-scale social restrictions has been implemented in the greater Jakarta areas. And as Sandy mentioned, uh, starting from the 24th of April, the annual exodus or mudik uh, during the end of Ramadan has been banned uh, in terms of um, yeah, to, to avoid the, the spread of this COVID-19. Still, uh, people, the government said the peak will be, might be at the end of May, but some others estimate that it will go as far as October until we see uh, the situation turn for the better. So before that happens, before the, flat, uh, the curve flattens, there, we have no other options. Okay, you know, today, Friday the 24th, is the, uh, I guess, the unofficial or official start of Ramadan, the fasting month. Um, and, and as you both said, uh, President Joko Widodo ordered a ban on, on the return home. You know, it, it's, it's a tall order. Usually 20 million people uh, head out of Jakarta for their hometowns. How are they going to enforce this if people are already starting to go? Sandrina? Yeah, um, they did predict that uh, people will try to use the narrow window uh, between the spreading of the information that it will be banned starting from today, the 24th, and uh, the 21st, 22nd, 23rd, there will be an exodus, but they say the number will be pretty small and they have taken extra precautions to try to prevent that. Still, they believe the numbers will be uh, limited, it will be insignificant. And uh, after the 24th, then all roads, all access going out from Jakarta and the greater areas will be closed and they will be ordered to go back home and sanctions will be implemented. So hopefully people will abide by these regulations. Yeah, Sandy, Sandy, if you were still in government, yeah, what would you say to the people 
who really look forward to going home and celebrating with their families um, the end of the fasting month, Eid al-Fitri. It's a big, such a big deal here in Indonesia. What would you say to them directly? Saying one thing is that this is going to be very, very crucial for the nation's health and also for their family because you may not have symptoms, but you may be carrying. But saying is not enough. You need to incentivize them to stay here. And if I were the government, if I were at the city hall now, uh, I would basically put a program to incentivize them to stay here. And people who are staying here will be able to access the uh, basic food supplies like sambaco, or as well as getting the extra salary or bonus if they stay here. That way we will be able to limit the way. But Sandrina was right. There is a, a small p window whereby they are now seeing that they just need to rush out of Jakarta and to avoid sanction, which is, in my opinion, will be counterproductive. This is a very difficult time, very unprecedented. We don't know. The experts have been getting multiple and conflicting informations from all my brief from various experts and scientists saying that the immunity uh, may not uh, last more than uh, three months and you, we don't know how many waves will it come back uh, in October or we just got a briefing uh, at the spe special task force unit by the government for COVID-19 whereby they said probably July so it's conflicting but in a way this is time that we uh, focus on spreading the in transparent information that hopefully will give us clarity and will unite the people to not go back home to their village. Yeah, yeah. Uh, going ahead of the, the, the uh, sanctions kind of defeats the purpose of the sanctions. So, uh, you know, people should use their common sense. Okay. Um, we want to uh, uh, talk a little more about the, the, the business side of this and, and for the day, um, ahead that will soon come. So Hot Indo will continue shortly with business plan, why your company should already be working on recovery strategies. You're watching Hot Indonesia with Sandrina, Sandy, and me. Here is hot topic number two, business plan. The end of this medical nightmare will come, hopefully, sooner rather than later. For businesses that have had to shut down, now is the time to make plans for reopening day. Stay in touch with your customer base and be ready with welcome back promotions when the doors once again open. Joining us now with his input is Lynn Newman, Managing Director of the American Chamber of Commerce in Indonesia. And Lynn, you happen to be in Singapore at the moment, um, waiting to return to Jakarta. Real quickly before we move on, how much tighter are things there? They say it's really tight in Singapore compared to Indonesia. Well, as we all know, uh, Singapore is a pretty disciplined place and it's a small place. It's only five and a half million people. So when uh, the Prime Minister here says lockdown. Everybody locks down and pays attention. So right now in Singapore, um, we stay home. We can go to the park to exercise. We can go to the supermarket alone, not with family, new restriction, uh, to buy groceries and supplies. We can go to a few other essential businesses. Uh, but that's it. But basically, everybody's staying home. And uh, they just extended that until the end of, uh, the end of May, so we're... Right, right. The Prime Minister had a news conference in the middle of the week. Now, now Lynn, AmCham, American Chamber, has 600 uh, members, 300-member uh, companies, not all U.S. companies, of course. Now, what is the number one guidance that you've been preaching during this crisis? Well, I think for, for our companies, as for any company, uh, the, the point is to try to, to try to prepare for the future and manage the present. A lot of our companies are... are uh, still open. A lot of factories are still open. If you're in food services, if you're in medical equipment, if you're in pharma, if you're in a lot of these, the factories are staying open. And there's, uh, you know, there's a good amount of economic activity. But a lot of the discussions we're having is about what to do when things open up. And that's about preparing for the future and preparing to re-enter the market and uh, hopefully retain your workforce and be able to, uh, to continue. Yeah, uh, Sandrita, question for Lynn? Yeah, um, we've heard a very optimistic, quite optimistic uh, comments from the Minister of 
uh, um, finance in Indonesia that uh, the economic growth in Indonesia will only uh, decrease uh, quite a small number. We know that the uh, outbreak in China will have surely a, a great impact in the economy in Indonesia. In your opinion, is Indonesia being uh, vigilant enough to face the upcoming challenges, uh, the economic challenges? Are we being quite, uh, are we prepared enough to face what's coming up? Well, the challenges that Indonesia faces are enormous, obviously. Uh, the healthcare system is stretched. Uh, the, the ability to respond is, is, is difficult. I think we, are, we have to face the fact, all of us, that we're going to go through a period of intense economic pain. And that that will mean uh, belt tightening. It will mean a difficult time to the government. And, and we may be facing, frankly, we may be facing something as significant economically as the 1998 crisis. This is what I'm hearing from Indonesian economists. So we're prepared in the American chamber, and our companies are prepared to continue to operate, to keep, to keep looking for opportunities to invest. And when things open up more, I think you'll see a lot of interest by investors in coming back into Indonesia. Nobody, and, and this is something we would say to Sri Mulyani or Aluhud or any of the ministers that we talk to, nobody's giving up on Indonesia. Indonesia will be back. But realistically, Indonesia is going to go through a lot of pain before it gets any better. And I mean economic pain in addition to the physical pain of this, uh, of this disease. Sandy, question for Lynn. Well, Lynn, I'm glad to reconnect and glad that you, to see you healthy. From the American chambers, we have seen a lot of companies are facing very difficulties. And typically during the crisis, you either have a J curve, V curve, or an L curve. What do you think this crisis, this uh, unprecedented pandemic, would have the impact to Indonesian economy? That's my first question. Second question. Do you agree if I start proposing that to reopen the economy, we need to be guided by data? And it may not be like a nationwide. It depends on the data. If Jakarta is not ready, but some other places like Central Java is ready, that they, they can reopen. Uh, two questions for you, Lynn. Thank you. Well, first, the first question, uh, the second question first. Uh, uh, I think reopening has to be guided by by data wherever it's taking place. And so if an if a, if a area looks like it's reasonably free of the disease and if it's reasonably able to operate, then I think that's, that's a, a good enough sign to, to reopen. Uh, for our companies, since they're mostly in uh, manufacturing commodities, this kind of thing, uh, they're, they're looking for the ability to continue producing. That's the main thing that they're looking for. As far as the crisis in Indonesia, I think like the crisis in a lot of countries, suddenly you're hit by this freight train of people losing their jobs, most retail businesses closing, and uh, resources having to be diverted into health. And that really is, is, is falling, that's like falling off a cliff for a lot of countries, and Indonesia is no different. So I'm not an economist, but it looks to me like a, a sharp V downward and then a gradual V upward as things return to normal. Uh, and one thing I would say that I would urge the government to think about as well is there are areas of the economy which have long been closed to foreign investment. You may have to think about opening up some of those areas. Uh, foreign investors want to be in healthcare, in education, uh, in, in greater access to the pharmaceuticals, et cetera. Let's open up the negative investment list. Let's move forward in partnership with the private sector to, to open up more opportunities and help Indonesia recover over the next two or three years. Yeah, Lynn, that's a good point. Maybe now might be the time to, to further open investment to, to, to stimulate um, an economy that's certainly going to be hurt. Now, Lynn, before you go, I want to ask you this. You know, previously, you were the founding editor of the Jakarta Globe newspaper, which has now gone all digital. And, and, and it's news guys, you know, I, I got to ask you this. Um, 
How has the Indonesian media handled the coverage, do you think? Well, I, I think, you know, we're getting a steady stream of information. Uh, we're getting a, a fairly good uh, dose of, of uh, uh, analysis. I think the one, the one thing that we're, we're journalists are really challenged in something like this is getting out on the street and talking to people. It's difficult. You don't want to go out into the compounds and start interviewing people because you're afraid for your own health. So that's a challenge for journalists. The other thing is that, that's a challenge is to monitor carefully uh, hoaxes, misinformation, disinformation, et cetera, and that continues to be an issue. But I think by and large, uh, the, the media I'm seeing is doing a, a reasonably good job, and, and I think in a difficult circumstance, it's something nobody really anticipated. Hats off to them. Hats off to these young kids who work as reporters. I was a young kid working as a reporter once myself. This is, uh, as we would say, Dalton, this is a great story. Uh, and uh, uh, these, these, these kids who work in the media now are doing the best they can at a difficult time. Sure, and they also have to have protective equipment as well when they do their jobs. Lynn Newman, Managing Director of the American Chamber of Commerce in Indonesia, presently uh, standing by there in Singapore. Thank you very much for your time and input. More Hot Indo is ahead. Anak, Bapak sedang menggunakan pakaian dari Kalimantan. TV time, learning your lessons is fun again. You're watching Hot Indonesia from Jakarta. Here's hot topic number three, TV time. Anak, Bapak sedang menggunakan pakaian dari Kalimantan Utara. 45 million kids are at home after schools were ordered closed because of the pandemic. To help with homeschooling, the government's public broadcaster, TVRI, began a daily instructional program this week called in English, Study from Home. And kids are loving it. Now, I guess they got tired of mom and dad trying to teach them algebra. Um, <laughs> TVRI has been criticized, as we've discussed, uh, for its programming for many years. But Sandy, I think they got a winner this time. Yeah, they got a winner this time. And it's uh, really, really clever uh, to put this strategy because the key is content. Content is king. And you have a content that is basically adapting to the new normal. And I think Sandrina would be very proud of her old employer because this is something that would bridge the digital uh, divide. This is something that people down at the uh, remote areas in the eastern part of Indonesia that have no internet coverage would be able to get good material, good content. Now, it's been a hit and it's, it has to be continuing to be promoted. Uh, and I think uh, if we are focusing on the right program and making sure that uh, we have the support from parents and we don't have a sort of like a blunder of a programming blunder. Uh, I think this is going to be a, a very, very uh, interesting time for TVRI going forward. Yeah, it could be their renaissance. Who knows? But, you know, Sandrina, I, he, many in a certain age group, your age group, a little bit of my age group, grew up <laughs> watching uh, programs like America, Sesame Street. Sesame yes. Street used to run oh, here, Sesame and I know a lot Street. of people yes. said they learn, they learn English here. So what Sandy is saying, content is king, and if it is good, it all works. Uh, I agree, uh, and surely this is a positive step. It's, it's providing alternative, as Sandy mentioned, to those uh, who have no internet access, for schools who are unable to provide online classes. Despite the limitations uh, that I've seen, because I... I've uh, seen several programs. They provide only like one subject for a certain grade or a certain class and uh, for 30 minutes, maximum one hour. But still, this is a great, great addition, uh, an alternative for those. It's entertaining and uh, it, could be, it could be seen by people throughout uh, the nation, uh, throughout Indonesia, because TVRI has the, the widest coverage. Now, you both have school-age kids. What are they saying about this? Are they, are they enjoying it? Uh, for my children, they have online classes, and it's taking up all of their time. So uh, they do not uh, watch TVRI for uh, additional classes. I think they've had enough. Okay. 
Sandy, your 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 son watching? Sulaiman is continuing to uh, spend time with uh, home and online learning through Zoom and other platform, and also she's getting he's getting material from YouTube. But what is very interesting is that this will provide a standardized uh, program, a standardized learning, as well as what really really interesting is you know kids have lots of energy. And they're running around at home. Uh, they they want to do stuff. Uh, parents uh, have to accommodate this. And in the past, when when we're away, not working uh, from home, we don't get to see this. But uh, you know, kudos to TVRI, and I think this is a revival. Hopefully, this will deliver also the next young generations of some good memories of uh, like Sesame Street. But here we have Unil and other programming that, uh, that you know, I used to enjoy when I was, uh, when I was little. Okay, Balaja Dari Ruma, hopefully yes, it'll, it'll help TVRI regain um, a wider viewership. Okay, it is feedback time now and we like to hear from you wherever you are watching us this day. Mohammed posted this on the YouTube page of our partner TV1. If the government chooses a complete lockdown, the country will have total chaos. Well, apparently that's what leaders are likely thinking, Mohammed. And Aden Riz left this comment on the Indonesia Channel YouTube page. My favorite channel. Always nice to hear that. Thank you very much. Here's how to contact us with your feedback. Email at hotindo at theindonesiachannel.com. And you know what? Nobody's emailing us as much as before. The first email we get, we're going to send a t-shirt, a hot Indonesia t-shirt to them. So maybe that'll spark it. Okay. And you can comment, of course, through our Hot Indonesia or Indonesia Channel, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram and YouTube pages. Final words, Miss Sandrina. Yes, the 21st of April in Indonesia is celebrated as Hari Kartini. Kartini is one of the Indonesian heroes for women's emancipation. And in correlation to this commemoration, um, I would like to extend my highest appreciation to all women in the world, those who continue to serve selflessly in the front lines just to make us uh, safe and healthy at home. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Okay, Sandy, final words from you. I, I've been wanting to ask you this whole show, the reason behind that, that cool hat you're wearing. Well, first of all, happy Kartini Day to Sandrina. Second of all, you may have questions why I'm wearing a forest hat as well as this uh, <laughs> uniform. Indeed. Uh, this is a uniform uh, of Relawan Indonesia Bersatu Siaga Melawan COVID-19. Basically, this is a unified volunteers group just uh, being recognized by the task force of the government to partner the fight against COVID-19. So this is the head uh, and we are now rolling out volunteers group across the nation. So please support and together we are united and we're resolute to fight against COVID-19. Yeah. Uh, my final words now. You know, staying in touch with other, others is important during this uh, trying stay at home time. A text is fine, but a call is 100 times better. Hearing someone's voice is so much more satisfying and soothing. Your parents and grandparents will especially appreciate that effort. And that is Hot Indonesia for this week. For Sandrina Malakiano and Sandy Uno in his hat, thank you for watching. I'm Dalton Zanaraka. See you again next time.